Hello, everyone. Happy August 1st. Hi, it's, everybody. It's Juno Sphere and Wisdom Seeker Joan here um, bringing you the August version of the month ahead. And we are here despite technical problems, which we have overcome. <laughs> We've learned that St. Isidore is the patron saint of uh, technical <laughs> issues in the internet. He came through for us today. So we're really happy to be here and talk to you a little bit about, um, about August. So Juno, tell us about the cards and the stones that are important for us in August. Hi, Joan. Well, um, we've got seven cards here for the month of August, and some of them overlap with the month of July, so they might, they might be familiar from last month. But these are all great cards. We've got the Sun card and the Strength card. And the six of um, wands riding in as a winner. And the knight of pentacles, things coming in slowly, but they're coming. And we've got the seven of wands, you know, battling and fighting, you know, keeping, keeping things at bay. And I think we're all kind of doing that. We're hanging on, to, we're holding our ground at the top of the mountain, but it's taking some effort. And we've got the hermit card, you know, taking time out in solitary and, you know, we're kind of back into it with, with the COVID coming up, you know, and it's numbers again, and we're isolating maybe a little bit more and it gives us time to shine our light and wisdom. And then here we have the eight of pentacles, which is working diligently, which I know you and I have both been doing that. Sorry, mm -hmm. about that. I'm trying to find my angle here, guys. Um, Looks good to me. You know, just, these are all really positive cards. Um, I won't repeat about the sun and the strength card because I think we pretty much know those guys. And the strength card actually, though, is really appropriate because that's for Leo and it's got the lion on it. Let's see. And how she works, um, you know, with patience, strength with patience. And moving on from those cards, I brought out a couple of my favorite crystals that are for the sign of Leo. And this is a rhodochrosite. And this one actually comes from a mine in Japan that's been closed for many years. And the person that created this piece actually lives near me. And um, he had special access to buy a lot of the, the left, what was left there that you could get. So this is a really sacred stone for me with the heart. And the other heart I have is an emerald, which is in a little bit different format than you guys are used to seeing, like in a ring or something, but it's still emerald. And it has great uh, healing properties. And when I do my journeying and my meditations and whatever, I always hold the, the emerald in my hand. So, And those are the you were stuff. saying that you are going to do a separate video that goes into more detail about, about those stones and the cards and all of the you know, mm -hmm. happenings for, for August. So mm -hmm. be yeah. sure to tune in and, and uh, look for those because um, I'd be interested in knowing a little bit more about the properties. And this is my new mandala that I made for all the month of August. This will be the background for my August gorgeous. August videos. Thank you. Oh, so much work. <laughs> and you did that just in this last month, right? Yeah, in the last two weeks. <laughs> in addition to putting out, I don't know how many videos and <laughs> learning new technology. Well, it's all a process, you know. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. And I really love those first, like the first four cards were all like victory and the sun oh, and yeah. just huge, huge positive. Yeah. yeah writing positive in cards. as a winner, you know, we need to see that writing in as a winner these days because it's our, it's our turn. Yeah. And we've got the elections, you know, I know tomorrow here is uh, election day. I've already dropped off my ballot, but I'm first seeing a lot of winners. And I have to tell you, I was, I always feel like I'm a blue dot in a red sea here a red desert so to speak and i spoke to the democratic headquarters here the other day and they said actually here is one third democrat one third republican and one third independent so this, it's not as dire as i thought it would be wow so that gave me a lot of encouragement okay yeah that's great that is great um we wanted to talk about a little bit about what's happening in the sky in august so there's mm -hmm. going to be a full moon on the 11th a new moon on the 27th. Um, on the 8th is the Lionsgate portal. And um, on the 12th is the, the peak of the Perseid um, meteor shower. So that's gonna be hard because the new moon is on the 11th and the Perseids are at peak at the 12th. So 
maybe try to, I think the Perseids um, start a little bit earlier. So if you wanted to get out a little bit before that new moon, that you might be more able to see them. But Juno, didn't you have a couple of cards about what's happening in the sky? Well, I do have, I have from my Moonology deck. Um, this is the new moon in Virgo. And it says the time to give rather than take. Mm. So, you know, I know that my personal challenge has been um, being gracious towards those who I'm at odds with. And I think there's a lot to that. You know, it's, it's really easy to give to those that we're comfortable with and easy with. And it's more of a challenge when there are people we're not so used to, you know, yeah. we might kind of bump up against each other. So, um, give more than you take. I think that's a good thing all across the board anyway, but especially now during this new moon in Virgo. And the other card I have, let's see if you can see that. It's um, the full moon in Leo says, don't let pride get in your way. So there's a big difference between, you know, having a healthy ego and being egotistical. So, you know, get out there yeah. and roar, but make sure you're not scaring people with your voice, I guess. <laughs> or like a pooty tat. <laughs> yeah. Confident, but not on, not in attack mode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keep the claws retracted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. And um, August is named for Augustus Caesar. And uh, he was the, I'll just read a little bit about him. He was the adopted son uh, of Julius Caesar. And let's see, he was also his nephew and his handpicked um, successor. Uh, his birth name was Gaius Octavius. Uh, and anyhow, he had lots of different names that people called him, but most people call him uh, Augustus Caesar. And on Julia, Julius Caesar's death, uh, the Octavian uh, fought to consolidate control when he finally secured his position as the first Roman emperor, he reigned the longest of any um, of the Caesars in Julius's line from 63 BC to 14 AD. And uh, he was the one mentioned in the Bible in, in the, uh, the story of the Christmas story. In those days, they said Caesar Augustus issued a decree uh, that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And that was one of the things he did. He started the census so they could tax people and kind of put in that whole system. But yeah. So we thought, oh, Ju um, Juno, you had a couple of things to say about, about Augustus Caesar. And I'm looking at my notes because I've been saying Caesar Augustus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why every time I see his name, I look over here. <laughs> but oh, what did well. you find in your research? <laughs> well, one of the things I thought was interesting that, that he was called the, a, a prince of peace and he was the only emperor, well, not the only, he was the first emperor to also become a pharaoh because when they went in and uh, conquered in Egypt, and I thought that was interesting. And, but one of the, you know, I let, read a lot of really positive things about him, but one thing that kind of um, made me stop and take a breath was that he burned 2,000 magical scrolls in 13 BCE. Wow, wow. And owning a magical book became a capital offense back then. And those who wished to preserve their books as well as their lives hid their libraries. I thought wow. that was really curious to, to find out. And, um, and back to the Lion's Gate, I just wanted to mention that th this is a, a really big portal that we have coming up. It's really important. Um, it's when Sirius, the brightest star, aligns with Orion's belt and the pyramids of Giza. And Sirius is the star of abundance and creativity and devotion. And joined with Leo, it gives you energy to manifest and to bring things into balance. Um, it increases exponentially, opens doors to intense love and awakening to the divine. So I encourage everybody to be, um, you know, take some time out and meditate a little extra at the beginning of uh, the portal. You know, it's actually opened on July 26th, and I think it goes to August 12th, but the peak of it is on the 8th. And I have a, an Akashic reading on that scheduled on that day. I'm so excited that. Oh, that'll be great. That that's going to work out with Akashic Bob. So we'll see yeah, what, what that we can see if we can manifest abundance in all different forms. Um, definitely, definitely. Relationships, jobs, money, peace on earth, anything. 
Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> give us give us anything positive. Right? Just 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 the little ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's jump in. And um I I promised last month that I I wouldn't do these ahead of time, but I did because I was intimidated <laughs> speaking to another Roman emperor. Um, so I did do this one ahead of time, talking about Augustus Caesar and asking, uh, let's see, the question is, um, what can people of today learn from your lifetime in ancient Rome? And what I got was, be of good cheer, never lose hope. There are many times, there were many times in my years as a leader when the way ahead seemed blocked by forces within, from within and without. There was a, a, lot of, um, a lot of politics involved of people trying to vie for power. But he said, never lose hope that you can achieve your goal. It can take time and compromise and um, agreements. You know, the whole idea of politics is... Uh, um, make str strange bedfellows, people that you don't agree with and other, other things you might come to agree with in order to get what you want. And uh, kind of like the big deal that's been hang uh, hammered out with Joe Manchin. Um, it can take time. Uh, with time, um, with time, those with who you don't align with, you might be able to hammer out an agreement, but it can be done. I achieved many things um, and I'm having trouble reading my, uh, I've achieved many things, um, for the empire, putting my understanding of what motivated people to work, uh, to, to include what motivated people, uh, always include, you know, not just what you want, but what the other person wants and how much, how much of that you know, that was kind of his bargaining chip to understand kind of the psychology behind negotiation, um, understanding what people wanted, what links they would go to get it, and what you are able to give to achieve a common outcome. Uh, balance knowing the other person's strengths and weaknesses with strategy and cunning. Um, and he did a lot of that. He was and then also to, okay, uh, and there are some things that must be vanquished, but be analytical. So there were times where he had to just go in and, and get things he wanted by brute force. Well, he didn't have to, but that's what he chose to do. Um, but he's cautioning, don't make an enemy of someone who might be someone who could further your own goals and your own purposes. Uh, yeah, so he, he sounds very strategic, but yet he did things like he was the one who built all the roads and set up this taxation system so that there was money to do things. Um, and it just became a very prosperous, prosperous time for Rome. And he kind of introduced the whole thing about civil service and everything too. So he's, yes, he did good, many good things that benefited the, the, the people of Rome. But in, in the back of his mind, it was always, you know, so I can stay in power and, and everything. It wasn't his main goal. But, you know, I'm sure we, we will take what we can get oftentimes. But I thought that was uh, a little Machiavellian, but still in the end, he, uh, he did better than, than Julius in, in many ways. He had, it just was amazing. And I just kind of did a brief uh, look at his history of how many negotiations and how many different wars were involved, um, but he was able to to really be a good leader throughout it. So what did you get? Well, I got some interesting cards that I think go along with what you were saying. You know, the Ace of Pentacles, he started out, you know, like you're saying, he kind of renovated, you know, he got the money system working in a more positive way for everybody. And I just wanted to mention when you talked about the building the roads and everything. He was also the one that started the idea of the mile markers. And he would have ah. like, uh, put up the, these, um, uh, you know, monuments or whatever with a plaque on it. And that would say so many miles to this city or to that city that were all in, in their territory. I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, and I also um, see this as a, 
you know, getting, getting the new start with money, getting a new financial system, turning things around, being more positive. Um, like you said, I mean, especially because his uncle died so tragically, it was a big, big shift, big change. And the, the research I did, there was so much positive about him. It was really kind of nice to read. Not that it was all perfect, but he did a lot of really good things. I see the high priestess here is um, from a, some of the other research, and I'll go into that in my separate video, that um, even though they did elevate women, there still was that, you know, just like the idea of burning all the magic scrolls and, you know, suppressing that kind of information. And I, I kind of see that through this high priestess card kind of, yeah, because that when we have individual power, then the church has less power mm -hmm. kind of idea. Um, the queen of pentacles, you know, she's usually about nurturing and being resourceful and her being in reversed. I think maybe that represents how when he came in, everything was kind of upside down. It was such a traumatic thing. And to have such a, you know, a, a leader be assassinated just sends everything into chaos. So I think that's what the, the queen of pentacles represents. And I was really pleased to see the temperance card. And that shows like you were talking about the balancing out of things. And um, one of the things in my research for the temperance card, I found out that the energy of temperance is more like how water will wear away rocks and change things. It's not like a volcano or an earthquake. It's much more subtle and, you know, working to balance things out. And, um, and who That's can go neat. wrong with Archangel Michael looking over you, you know? Exactly. I really like the Ace of Pentacles as far as he did that in Roman times. And we were kind of at a, or could mm -hmm. be at a financial new beginning for our country um, soon. If, you know, if certain laws get passed and certain people are, um, and corporations are paying their fair share again. It could bring in a, a really uh, wonderful period of kind of a renaissance for, for America. So I hope that that uh, rings true. And I also read that for, even though he was an emperor, he led a very relatively austere life. So he wasn't all about golden toilets and yeah. all that kind of <laughs> fancy stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Definitely somebody we can learn from. Definitely. I learned a lot from doing the research. I didn't, you know, I'd heard the name, but, uh, and there was a St. Augustine that they yeah. tried to, to, um, when he came in, they tried to use him to say that that's where the name August came from. And it actually originally came from Augur, A-U-G-U-R, which is an old name for a seer. And it meant increaser, once referring to the mother priestess. The first emperor Augustus took his title from the great mother of the gods, presumed incarnate of his wife, Livia Augusta, who Augustus honored as the national goddess. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? I saw something that said it meant venerable, which goes yeah, along with yes. what you're, you're mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. Cool. Very okay. Cool. Wonderful. Okay. Well, let's move on to um, kind of the holidays and days of recognition in August. And I tell you, there weren't, there weren't, I think a lot of people in politics must take August off. because it, <laughs> There were just, it was like national soft ice cream day and, you know, <laughs> lots of things like that, that were like, eh, no big um, historic dates. So on some of these, I've put a bunch of them together that kind of made a theme. So that, okay. and that's true of our first one. Uh, I mean, we're recognizing that uh, August 1st, today is International Child-Free Day. The 8th is International Cat Day. And Juno, you noted that that's also the date of the Lionsgate portal opening. So maybe there's a similarity there or some connection. And uh, August 26th is National Dog Day. So I'm putting those three together and asking the question, what impact will the choice uh, many people are making to have pets rather than children have on society at large going forward. And let's see what Spirit has to say about this. What can you tell us about this impact of people choosing pets over children? Not everybody, but some people. Okay, I'm getting that. Like any choice, any choice has an array 
of consequences. Um, some positive, some negative, and I don't like to use positive and negative, but they have, it's not going to be just one thing. Um, one of the best things that's going to happen is that more people having pets and really forming a relationship with a pet is going to open their hearts and give them compassion and uh, compassion for other beings other than humans. Um, and we see this, I think, in like many people being vegan or um, animal rescues and having compassion uh, for not only creatures, but for the, for the earth. So that's a really good thing. Um, one of the things on the opposite side of that is that um, some people may not feel directly as connected with the issue uh, issues of parents with children to raise. So they may object to supporting, you know, paying taxes for schools or contributing to, you know, would rather contribute to the Humane Society rather than to some organization that helps children. So that there needs to be a balance there. Um, the other thing they're saying is that they're there may be a trend toward people with larger numbers of children, maybe either lower income or in certain in certain societal groups uh, that might throw things out of balance. But I think our job, uh, so, okay, so they're saying, Focus on the positive, focus on how a close relationship with an animal and a pet can open your heart and build compassion. And we can uh, focus on that generalizing to love, not just for animals and, and other creatures in the earth, but for all, all creation, including other people's children. Anything else? They say, pass, pass it to you. <laughs> <laughs> pass the pass the baton well that was i really um appreciated your insights that's you know that everything is changing so much on, on on all the levels and then you have uh issues with infertility with people you know from mm -hmm. from all these different reasons and then the not being able to get contraceptives i mean it's going i think that that's being shown here with the the five of wands, you know, there's just so many different things that are at odds with the whole idea. Um, but to, to start with, you know, here we have the knight of wands, you know, he's charming and restless and hot headed and foolhardy and brings in drastic change. And I think that, you know, I know when you and I were growing up, we didn't worry when we went to school, you know, it was, oh, you could yeah. walk to the bus stop without worrying, you know, and now everything is just so different with all the I don't have to, everyone knows what's going on with the schools. And I think that that gives people pause to whether they're going to choose to have children or not. Yeah. Maybe it's easier to have a pet than to have a child and not necessarily less expensive in a lot of ways. But, <laughs> you know, the, the, the care for animals is a big deal too. But, you know, then we come here, we have the, the um, nine of pentacles and she's wealthy and and self-reliant independent she's but she's living in her own little world of course she's got her her bird up there on her hand but the bird's got a hood on it so she has control over that bird um i think that that maybe can be a sense of security you know that animals will have a safe place to be because they're in an enclosed garden but right now also there's a lot of overflow at the shelters and People, when the, when the pandemic started, went out, oh, it's so great, let's go get a new puppy or a new kitten, and then they weren't, they didn't get it for the right reasons, and then they bring them back to the shelters. So there's a lot of need, but I know that I benefit greatly from a local agency that helps to keep uh, people like me to be able to afford pet food. They bring, I've got like six months of pet food <laughs> lined up for That's my great. dogs, they've been so generous, so you know, it, it, it's the, when you come back to here to the temperance, it's the balancing again and mm -hmm. people weighing out their options of whether to have children or not have children or, or even to adopt a pet or to keep a pet. 
And so many people are struggling with their own living situation that they're having to make a really hard choice. It's really yeah. easy. People a lot of times will look down on people who have to give up a pet and think, well, how could you do that? Well, sometimes people can't help it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, but people are making a lot of really hard choices right now. So, um, I think you're right. A lot of it is, um, kids, you know, raising a child is expensive. Um, but I, I'm kind of encouraged by the, the nine of pentacles that maybe mm -hmm. if there are, I hate to say this, but if not everybody chooses to have children, though, there might be more resources so that each one is given enough, uh, you know, it, and, you know, there's also the, uh, the earth itself, maybe, you know, the, I don't know if overpopulation, if this is one of the ways uh, to reduce overpopulation along with the pandemic, it's just a mm -hmm. horrible thing to think about. But um, maybe if we could get to that, that woman in her garden where everything seems to be, as you say, under control and there's enough resources for everyone, that would be a nice goal that every child and every, every creature is cherished and, and lives in a sustainable manner. Definitely. Definitely. So, I've probably it? offended a lot of people about that, but we'll move on. <laughs> well, <laughs> such is life. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. People are very easily offended these days. So <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, something, um, something else uh, coming up on August 2nd is National Night Out. And it made me think about will neighbors and families that have been so divided and separate in recent years be able to be coming back together more in um in this coming year i've been thinking about that a lot yeah okay spirit what do you say about this uh, going to your national night out, if you have a neighborhood uh, street party or whatever, might be a good beginning. Uh, just to stand in the same street or in the same backyard or whatever with a neighbor whom you don't disagree with is a start. It's a step forward. It's the first drop. Like you were saying in temperance, the water that drops and, and wears down the stone. There has to be a beginning, a beginning place. Um, and something as common as let's get together with neighbors and celebrate our, you know, the summer and have games for kids and that type of thing. And not bring up politics um, might be a good start. But overall, okay, Spirit, what about the overall in the year? They're showing me some, uh, they're showing me the two of swords, the, the, with the blind, the blinders on, with a um, blindfold on. There are someone, there are some people who will never see, but there are some people, they're kind of showing me with their, they're taking down the blindfold over her eyes, who are beginning to peek out from, from behind the blinders that they have been wearing to see that there is another way and to... I'm just getting the, it's not like people are going to say, oh, I was so wrong. Let's go out for coffee. But it, there is a softening, a softening of the, the hard, hardly firmly drawn lines. And that's pretty hopeful. Also, um, people will change more when it benefits them, when they see the results of um, policies implemented that will be to their benefit, they might pull back a little bit. So it's not going to happen all at once, but I think there is a softening there. Ooh, what are you saying? Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get, I was mixing up the two of swords. Well, she had a blindfold too, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. definitely. But definitely. definitely the blindfold. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. With the aid of swords, you know, but, you know, she's she's not blocked in all the way. You know, this is something that's by choice, and I think that's what a lot of us have done. Have kind of put up our defenses around us, and you know, um, feeling at odds with others, and and realizing 
just the degree of differences that are perceived out there when really we're all the same, we're all one. Um, and even the people on the other side, you know, the fear is on both sides. Fear is, is uh, it doesn't choose sides. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It's on, everybody's got their fears of the other. So I think that's kind of where we've been being isolated and, and feeling blindfolded. Like we can't go out, we can't see people where you're wearing a mask. You can't see if they're smiling. And, um, and then here we have the five of cups, which you know, there's still two cups up. And this is what I always try to remind myself. I don't very often go out, but when I do, I realize if I go to the grocery store that a lot of these people that are providing me with groceries and whatever, gas for the car or whatever, they're, they don't think the way I do. But I, we still have to work together. And we have to see that though there's still two cups up. There's still things that we have in common, even though there's the three cups that are spilled over, you know, there's still hope. And there's a bridge in the background there that we can we can find a bridge if we look for it between each other. Um, we have the eight of cups, which is moving on and um, not all is lost. So it's kind of like, we're going to be moving on to away from this sense of isolation. It's going to take time. It's going to be gradual. Um, but I think that as I hate to say it, but as the, you know, climate change and things get more severe, we're going to have to depend on each other more. We're going to have to drop these silly, petty differences and, you know, find ways to work together because that's how we're going to build the new world that we're all envisioning. Um, and here at the end, we have the Ace of Cups in reversed. So that's about staying alone for a little bit longer. So maybe this means that we're not going to accomplish this goal in August. That doesn't mean we don't keep working towards it. But, and, you know, I find it's easier to have realistic expectations about these outcomes and not think, well, I want to wave my magic wand and it all is great. Well, that's going to cut out a lot of growth for us and a lot of um, yeah. necessary building that we're going to need to do together. So there's no tower. There's no devil card here. There's no death card. You know, we all know it's a challenge that we're living through, mm -hmm. but I like seeing all these cups turned right side up and look yeah. at all the emotional, you know, three cups cards. So our yeah. differences are based on emotions. Yeah. And emotions can be changed. Definitely. That's one of the things I, I like about the way you read is you read the reverse cards. A lot of people are like, mm, I don't want to do that. If they're, if sometimes they're not quite as happy. <laughs> but you know what? A lot, of, a lot of times the reverse cards are more positive than people realize, you know? Yeah. In the and situation. It, yeah. And it's like, I would rather be forewarned and forearmed than think, oh, it's, you know, Pollyanna, la, la, la. And then when I hit a wall, I go, what was that? Where did that wall come from? Exactly. I stepped on a rake, you know. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Next up is another kind of combo. Um, August 7th is Lighthouse Day. And mm -hmm. it's also International Forgiveness Day. So oh. my question is, Tell us about the role forget of forgiveness in raising our vibration and serving as a light to others. Okay. Forgiveness. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of things. I'm seeing the lighthouse. Uh, if the ship is out on a stormy night, the lighthouse is a beacon. It brings you in. And it, and what they're emphasizing to me is it creates new possibilities when you're tempest-tossed at sea. For, forgiveness is like the light that allows you to make the choice to change things up and, and create new possibilities. It's also like energy when you're both like this. Forgiveness allows, it just changes the energy and, and it doesn't always create happy endings, but it, okay, it's sort of like in martial arts, instead of um, going head to head at each other, it, if you, you know, duck or whatever, the other person will punch through and that will open up other opportunities. I shouldn't be using martial arts and, and battling uh, imagery. But that's the it idea. It's it's if if the energy is just going like this, there's no opportunity for change. It'll just keep 
going like that. And forgiveness is creating possibilities for a new and possi possibly more positive outcome. So what do you have? Well, these are interesting. We've got the emperor here, a good foundation. And I think for me, it's been a hard thing to do, but learning to forgive myself first and foremost, mm. it's almost like no forgiveness happens until you forgive yourself. And studying that is your foundation. You know, being good with yourself, you know, really being aware of, of uh, you're creating your own stability, not to look for that in someone else. So that, and I think that if we do that, and if we're more secure in ourselves, we're less likely to feel someone has done something to us that we need to forgive them for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more like looking at their, like I learned a lot in Jin Jitsu about meeting people where they're at. And if they say a certain thing, maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe it's, you know, maybe they're just having a bad day. But if you start your day in the, in the mindset of forgiveness, even before you leave the house, your day is going to go much better than if you leave the house already decided you're going to have a bad day and everybody out there is against me. And um, so that's what I see with the emperor and the, the king of pentacles reversed. It's about being ungrounded and spacey and having health problems and money problems and I think that all of these kind of things go together, all those stresses and anxieties and, and feeling like you're holding back forgiveness for others can magnify those things in us. Makes, and it's not only that it actually happens, but it also because it's like in your own head, oh, everything's out to get me. And, you know, we don't realize that if we turn our um, thinking around and, and being forgiving, even when maybe we know we're really, we've really been wrong, but really be forgiving, it does start to turn your life around and be more positive. And I know for me, the first thing I do is go into gratitude about every little thing. And um, it's made all the difference in my life to be, to be positive. And, and I think that those things go along with forgiveness. They kind of work hand in hand. The Ten of Pentacles in reverse is bankruptcy and deep money loss, um, no light at the end of the tunnel. So if you go down the path of not forgiving others, that's where you're going to be. There's not going to be any light at the end of your tunnel. You know, nobody else is going to save you. you got to save yourself. And that's not just during these times. It's, it's the way it is all through life. So... You know, work to turn these, the, 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 what I also learned about the reverse cards is the focus then is to turn, work on turning those things right side up. And then we have the high priestess here being in reverse and that's like denying your, your psychic abilities and, and being shallow. And I also think it's like hiding your, your psychic side, not looking not looking at that, not, not allowing that to come to fruition. And I think that the more we embrace our intuition and our insights and our gifts, as well as honoring the gifts of others, um, that'll help us move forward because there's going to have to be a lot of forgiveness that goes on on everybody's part. None of us is, is going to get away without being forgiving of others right now because we're involved in a really stressful time. So... Again, Definitely. no no devil card, no death card, no hanged man card, you know. Yeah. This is all workable. It's all workable. Well, this is so much fun, but I realize we're already over an hour. <laughs> oh my gosh, how did that happen? Yeah, so I'm going to jump ahead and uh, let's do, let's see, um, August 9th is International Day of the World's Indigenous People. So what are the most important lessons we can learn from the indigenous people that will benefit humanity at large and the earth? And right away, my third eye chakra is just lighting up. Um, so vision, envision, envision what you want be in touch with nature, be in touch with Gaia, live according to a higher vision and a connection with nature. Okay, and 
kind of like Julia or Caesar Augustus, Augustus Caesar, the Octavian, whichever way you say it is, <laughs> uh, the man with so many names, um, don't give up. Uh, persist. Look at what's happened. What horrible things have happened to indigenous people. And yet they have not willingly, but throughout this time, they have clung to their cultures. And now it, there's this slow turning of people saying, oh, you know, the Native Americans, they did these prescribed burns for forest fires. And mm -hmm. people are finally, finally, finally learning that, you know, there might be something to that. Maybe we shouldn't be taking away their children and putting them in schools. And maybe there's benefit to the way that they live and can teach us something rather than the European way of coming in and just assuming that my way or the highway is the right way. Uh, so there's some, there's some hope and uh, humility. Humility is the other word for, for just that, for people who are not of those cultures, to take a back seat for once and <laughs> learn from some, someone else, learn something uh, that could be good for, for everyone in a way that you're not familiar with. So what do you have? Well, look at all these cards are upright. Yay. I'm, really, I'm really happy to see these cards. Here with the Six of Cups, this reminds me of how they're very, um, uh, like they respect all the generations. You know, they a lot of times they live with all the generations in one household, you know, the children to the parents to the grandparents and maybe the great grandparents or the aunts and uncles or whatever. And also this tells me about them, the, the verbal traditions of handing down their stories and the value of doing that. Um, the Ace of Cups, you know, even though they have been when I'm speaking here of the Native Americans, even though they've been so trod upon and abused and, you know, unappreciated, they still offer this, this uh, hand with the cup in it, with the emotions and the love flowing out of it, that they're still there to help teach us and, and to help us find our way through this time. And it's actually, it's like Hopi prophecy is being fulfilled right now, the way the world is going. And and I, this just really, this really touched my heart to see this card um, in the, for this question. And the lovers, that's about cooperation and healing and communication. It's not just about, you know, a man and a woman in a romantic relationship or whatever. It's, it's about joining together in community. And I just find these cards just so hopeful. They, they almost bring tears to my eyes. It's just really touches me. And the Knight of Cups, um, you know, he's moving slowly, but, but the horse is moving. And, you know, it's like when people say, well, why can't you just turn your thinking around in a hurry about this or that or the other? And it's like, if you're going down the, the highway at 85 miles an hour, you can't go in the other direction just by spinning around because you'll, you'll have a crash. So I think that they're, they've been quietly living their, their truth in the background, knowing that the day will come when we're going to be turning to them for guidance and, and help through this time and they're bringing it you know yeah and look at all the cups again here we got three cups cards in this reading yeah so lots of, it's very emotional time this month and bringing together especially in the lover's card the the sun the air the earth all the mm -hmm. all the elements coming together and mm -hmm. respect for all of them that's beautiful yeah. thank you yeah. mm -hmm. okay next up we have Let's see. Um, August 9th again is International Day Against Nuclear Tests, which is a good thing, I think. Mm -hmm. So my question is, um, what role will the new advanced nuclear power generation uh, play in reducing dependence on fossil fuels? Many people have said that the, these newer generations of uh, nuclear power generators our whole promise. And I'm just getting something real quick that it is, yes, it does hold promise. I'm seeing someone holding a kind of a 
you know, the symbol for nuclear power, the little atom in mm -hmm. their hand, like it, it's mm -hmm. a, like it's a crystal ball. Ah, oh, but seeing it as a bridge, a bridge technology. There will be those who it's like, okay, we can make some big money off of this and really push it. But sooner or later, it will be, it will be better than what we have now. Um, but as, as we move forward into the, the new era, it would be best if this is a bridge technology <clears throat> and somehow have an end date or a transition plan to even get off of that too before the big push for, for building these units even begins. Um, so they're saying, yes, it will help, but it, in the long run, <clears throat> there'll be other technologies and that, that type of power generation should, uh, should only play a temporary role. Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> I, would, I would at your cards. Oh. <laughs> upside down ones. Well, here we have the two of wands in reverse, and that's about the fear of the unknown. And that okay. totally makes sense with this situation because, you know, you know, even the best things out there always have a downside. You know, there's always yeah. a, a balance with each thing. Um, and with the page of pentacles waiting for a message. So we're kind of waiting to hear and waiting to see what does come of this. And, you know, there's only so many things that we're aware of that they're, that they're working on. What are the things that we don't know they're working on out there? Um, Queen of pentacles ungrounded and spacey. I think that all this unknown about these things, you know, gas price, everything going up and, you know, the, the energy, the, the shift, it's, it is an uneasy time. It's an uncertain time. And how are we going to pay for all this, you know, with the pentacles upside down? Both of the pentacle cards are in reverse. Um, but yeah. then we follow up with the fool, you know, a new beginning and a, a happy leap of faith, unpredict, un, un, excuse me, unprecedented faith. You know, we're stepping off into a whole new universe. The the yeah, the stars in the sky haven't been this way since uh, the beginning of the Bronze Age. We're going through a shift that's of that degree. So, I think it's kind of it, it makes sense to have some cards in reverse, mm -hmm. knowing how things are kind of like it, it's like somebody shook the snow globe and everything is waiting to fall back down into place again. Yeah, that's great. I like the the fool card that. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a new journey, a new, a new leg of the journey, at least. Whether we like it or not, yes. <laughs> it has been foisted upon us. Okay. Um, August 15th is the Assumption of Mary. So what message does Mother Mary have for humanity for today and especially this month? Mm, it is a turning point. It is the time uh, of the divine feminine. And she's showing me uh, a woman with a baby in arms. More compassion toward all, all creatures and especially toward children. And all children are our, our children. There's been um, in the United States and, and elsewhere, in fact, elsewhere in governments elsewhere, there have been more women, not throughout the globe, but in other countries who are in more leadership and prominent positions, but there's been so much more uh, movement of women being in responsible positions in government, in business, in nonprofits, in families, in uh, the it's I'm seeing the pendulum. Uh, it's it's time for the shift, and and things will there'll be resistance to it in many ways, but overall, it's a shift for the good to bring in the the divine feminine energy. Okay, what do your cards say about this? Mm, thank you for that message from Mary. Beautiful. Um, here with the judgment card at the beginning, we've got Archangel Gabriel um, 
you know, it's about rebirth and renewal, uh, making things new again, having, uh, having faith. So I think this is very encouraging from her that, uh, you know, we, we've got to just keep looking up. Like these people, they're all looking up for their answers. They're not looking at where their feet are going. They're looking up for guidance. And here again with the, the eight of swords, realize that the situation, the, the victim mentality that we might be experiencing is our own thoughts. That we can, we can take that blindfold off and we can step out of this uh, confinement that we feel like we're in emotionally and mentally. The hanged man in reverse is about becoming unstuck. So I think she's encouraging us to see things from a dis different perspective and become unstuck. Um, I keep, I know I say this a lot, but I think the key to where we're, to being successful going forward is being adaptable and adjustable. Mm -hmm. um, and here everybody, you know, panics when they see the 10 of swords, but this is like, this is the worst it's been. And now it gets better after this. It's a 10. We've reached the, the culmination of that. We've all experienced what this feels like, no matter which side of this fence you're on. Um, but it's, it, it does get better after this. And yeah. I would just, I would just really focus back on the judgment card and having, having that extra hope and faith. And the more you put it out there, the more of that you'll attract to yourself. I think the 10 of, 10 of swords is the death of the patriarchy. Oh, good. One. Yes. Very good. Which I won't cry over too much. <laughs> yeah he's even got a sword in his ear like i said that ain't no q-tip you know <laughs> um and the you know i'm not a tarot reader but uh the judgment card too is like the assumption of mary rising up mm -hmm. and new beginnings cool i mm -hmm. like that thank you thank you mary yes okay um we'll ran uh Finish up with uh, August 22nd is Tooth Fairy Day. Oh. And while I don't have a lot of questions about tooth fairies, I thought we <laughs> could ask, what messages uh, do the fairies and other elementals have for us on this 1st of August in this, uh, you know, the dog days of August, everything's coming to fruition out in the gardens. Um, what do the elementals have to say to us? <laughs> right away it's like Hort I always get a lot of children's book references and Horton hears a who where they are <laughs> they are going I love we, are here, we are here <laughs> yeah. we are here pay attention boil that dust speck boil that dust speck <laughs> <laughs> they are here and they want to be recognized and oh yeah they're kind of having fun I'm seeing <clears throat> a little fi fairy like sliding down holding on like doing a zip line down a leaf, something like that. <laughs> They're, uh, they want to be recognized. They want, they want us to engage with them and with the natural world more. And invite them, invite them in, maybe Put a little something out in the garden for them, or if you have house plants or something, they can be a little uh, uh, prankster like sometimes. So it's always good to have the fairies and other elementals on good terms with you. Um, and they're saying, yes. It, it, just take care of the, you know, often take care of the earth, do what you can and help us. They're asking for help, water the garden and things were just, if we can align forces, they're showing me all these different flowers, just like in slow motion blossoming, huge roses and peonies and uh, vegetable blossoms coming up and here's some pumpkins and things that it's in our best interest to understand understand the plant world. Uh, they're saying many people have have made that connection and understand more about mammals and about the animals and the birds. 
but the plants are there too, and they are there for our benefit. Um, and it is, it's worth your while. It'll be a two-way street if you engage and um, connect with the fairies and with, and with the plant world. Anything else? I'm just seeing lots of movement, movement, movement of energy. It, energetically, it'll be good for all concerned to just keep them in mind. Oh, like what that. do you have? Oh, and nice. this is a new set of cards. Tell us about this. Well, these are, this is my Healing with the Fairies deck. This is one of my oldest decks that I've had for maybe 30 years now, 20, 30 years. Um, first card is Make Music, which to me, that's saying that music attracts them. You know, so when you're feeling a certain way about something, put on some music and, you know, invite the fairies to come and the elementals to come in and play and, 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 uh, show us the way to be lighter and be happier. And here we move into environmental awareness, which goes right along with your reading also that, um, really be conscious of the plant life around you. And you know, when, when you get used to just going to the store and picking up whatever you want, whatever produce, and it's all perfect and no blemishes and everything, you don't really realize until you try to grow something yourself. <laughs> I know out here in the desert, I've gotten things where the, the tomatoes were just ready to bloom and then some kind of creature came and ate them all overnight, you know, oh, the devastation yeah. of, of not having that. So be aware of your environment, be loving to your environment, um, do what you can to, to nurture it. You know, it doesn't just take fertilizer and water, it takes our loving thoughts as well to nurture our environment. Um, moving forward fearlessly, you know, we're making a lot of changes and we have to make them with, with some sense of assertiveness and not let ourselves be pushed back by the people who want it the way it used to be all the time. Um, you know, just fear doesn't get any of us anywhere. So drop your fears and quiet time. To me, that's saying, get out in nature and be quiet and look for the fairies, ask them to come and and visit with you and show themselves to you and, I was in a shamanism class re recently and I was doing a journey and, and um, being instructed to, you know, turn into the fairies or whatever and ask them to come out. And what surprised me was my tarot card characters came to life in my vision, in my journey. Wow. <laughs> started walking around and I was, and the fairies were there too, but it was like, whoa, look at those guys. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. So. Yeah, you know, they're out there. If you, if you, it's almost like doing that magic eye, you know, those old prints, the computer generated prints. If you kind of shifted your vision a little bit, you could see things. It's kind of like that. I think that's how you see the fairies. Just kind of let your eyes go unfocused and then there they are. Well, thank you. That was beautiful. And now I am highly motivated uh, to get out there and water my garden. <laughs> we were taping this in the morning and I didn't water this morning. So I've how to get out there or else I'll be on bad on bad terms with the fairies or at least with my plants. Juno, I can't thank you enough for this. This has been really a joy. I really enjoy doing this with you and I hope I hope all of you out there enjoy it too. Um, tell us about what's coming up for you on your channel or on other collaborations you're doing. Well, I have a few collaborations um, tentatively set up, one with Valerie of Illumination Portal. We're just waiting to nail down the day and I'm going to do um, with Jeffrey from Ripe Color, I'm going to be going over the Temperance card with Jeffrey on his series. And today, once as soon as I get done with this, I'm working on my first video for 108 video series of Magic Mudra Mondays, where we'll learn different finger positions and how they can help you on a lot of levels. And the first one I'm going to do also will help you get in touch with your Akashic records. So if that's something people are looking to do, um, tune in to my video for that and. I continue to do, you know, I'll do the 12 or 14 videos for the cards for August and lots of fun things coming up. But I so love this, Joan. I just love working with you. There's nobody I'd rather do this with than you. And it it's was fun. such an honor when you invited me. You must have got my mental message the first time we spoke that I want to <laughs> work with her. And I, it just tickles me to no end that we can do this together. I'm really honored and grateful. I, I love working with you too. It's so much fun. And uh, let's see, I am, uh, I'll, pr I think I'll be on uh, Meet the Mediums on this Thursday. And then on August 9th, I'm having a guest on um, 
Gertrude Shu is her name. Oh, she's wonderful. Yeah. And there, uh, we had kind of an interesting connection of, um, and decided to do a collaboration together. So I'm really, in, in case you don't know her, she, although she was on Sherry H's channel and they did just a bang up job there, mm -hmm. kind of introducing her, but she's somebody you might want to get to know. And I invite, invite you to uh, come see her on the, the 9th. So thank you so much. And please come back and, and see us in September. See you in September. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a great month of August, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye. I know. <laughs>